So this time of year it's time to get the garlic and also this year I'm trying elephant garlic. So that's something you may want to try. Uh, it's just a very large uh, cloved uh, type of garlic, but it's not really actually a garlic. It's actually a member of the leek family. It's a type of leek uh, that produces nice bulbs underneath the surface of the soil. So uh, this t time of year is about um, middle to the end of September, uh, first of October, a lot of time in our area. Uh, people are planting out their garlic, getting it in the ground, and then it'll get start to grow a little bit before the cold weather sets in and then it'll kind of go dormant over the winter and then start growing again and it'll be ready about July or so. So I'm out here in my garden this morning. I'm going to plant my garlic and elephant garlic uh, out in one of my 30 inch beds. Uh, the last area got a lot of rust uh, disease last year. So I want to try and avoid that by moving it and see if I'm hoping it won't be still floating around the air somewhere where it'll uh, find my garlic again because it really diminishes the quality of the garlic and the size dramatically. Um, so I, was, I had to actually purchase uh, some more garlic cloves to plant out this year because mine weren't viable or some of them were but not enough to plant the quantity that I wanted and I'm still a little weary of you know the disease coming across in them they say it shouldn't come across in the cloves uh, but there's always that chance of some spores getting on the outside of the clove or something like that and getting in the soil so the best thing to do when uh, planting garlic or elephant garlic um, is to uh, put lots of compost out on the soil and then it's recommended to mulch over the top with either like straw or leaves work really well. Um, I tried wood chips and I think that may be in the source of my rust disease. Brought it in from there but I'm not, there's no guarantee. People have also recommended you know putting wood chips uh, over garlic. So it's, it's hard to say. The first time I tried it I had you know problems. So I don't know, I'm kind of weary of uh, trying it again. So anyway, I'm just gonna use compost as kind of like my mulch right now and mixing a little bit in with the soil because I want to be super fer fertile for them. The uh, alliums uh, like a lot of nitrogen. Um, so, you know, good compost will supply most of that for it. Uh, you may need to uh, use a little fish fertilizer or some other nitrogen source. Um, blood meal might be an option too. I'm a little concerned about you know contaminants in the in the blood, but I don't know if they break down enough. But that would be another option as well. So uh, for the spa for the elephant garlic, which I'm doing this morning, uh, what I did was on eBay. I found a company over in Sio that uh, sells these bulblets. Um, these are like kind of like a seed. These aren't the uh, cloves that grew in the soil, but they are from the flower head. When it produced a flower, it produced these little seeds. And once you plant these in the soil, uh, they'll you know grow up to grow up to be a elephant garlic plant and produce cloves. Now these cloves, the first couple years, they won't be as big as they will be eventually. Um, so it's kind of like planting asparagus from seed. It takes a while to get it going rather than buying a crown, but you're saving quite a bit. So I was able to get 50 of them for I think about $11, uh, which is very economical. Um, otherwise I'd be paying maybe, oh, maybe get five or six for $15 if I was to buy cloves. So it's significantly cheaper and um, you know, I'm just going to try it out and see, you know, if I even like the stuff well, how well it keeps. And, you know, over the next couple years, I'll start to get some nice big cloves out of it. So the determining factor of how deep you plant these is really your uh, hardiness zone that you're in. How cold, the, the cold temperatures that it reaches 
uh, I guess the coldest temperature that reaches during the winter. Um, so around here it's about averages uh, 20 to 15 uh, let's see here is that right yeah uh, 20 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit is about as low as it gets around here so we really that's um, you know not not damaging to the cloves necessarily so they can be fairly shallow um, and they actually grow a little bit better you know they're closer up to the surface you don't have to bury them quite so deep but see when you have clay soil um, it's more important to try to get them closer to the surface and in more of a you know compost soil mixture to grow in rather than deep down in the heavy clay if you have loam or sandy soil that shouldn't be as much of a problem so for elephant garlic here it's recommended 10 to 12 inches spacing um, so in a 30 inch bed here um, I was able to get without getting too close to the edge I was able to get three rows in here and so these are these are 10 inches apart uh, the rows are 10 inches apart and I'm doing 12 inch spacing within the row there uh, just because I couldn't get the 12 12 inch spacing uh, between the rows in here without getting so basically right on the edge and I didn't want that so um, that's that's very usable as long as they have you know at least one dimension is 12 inches and the others you know 10 or something like that you should be fine so if you have a little wider beds you could do you know or if you wanted to do two rows you could do maybe t 10 inch spacing within the within the row or something like that but um, anyway so I put a good good layer of compost down here and I'm just gonna plant right into that and just pushing them down about an inch into the soil they're not just just so that they're covered and uh, that's enough to uh, keep, protect them from the cold winters and then they'll, they'll start they should be starting to grow here uh, before it gets too cold once the, once the, as long as they have moisture and they'll start to grow here so this is yeah this is kind of what they look like here they're just uh, like little tiny garlic cloves so and these are a little bit more difficult to figure out so you know the pointy end is the the side you want to have pointed up they don't do too terribly well when it's pointed down or to the side it kind of stunts them a little bit so it's um, in in nature they're normally growing from another clove you know it's kind of like a propagation um, so they're always used to being you know perfectly vertical um, as, a, as a starting point so you when you if you plant them out separately you got to make sure you get them in that position too so these are kind of pointy on both ends but this there's a definitely a, 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 a uh, if you look carefully there's definitely a more pointy part and a little more uh, area where you could see where maybe there could be some roots coming out here so once you have the bulblets uh, planted it's good to give them a little bit of water uh, get them going um, so that way they'll start um, absorbing water and breaking open and starting to grow and then they don't need a whole lot of water during the during the fall, but just make you know, if it's dry like it is around here. A lot of times, in most parts of the country, it's you know starting to rain around here, get kind of uh, bad weather. So you really don't have to worry about the watering so much. Uh, but right now, this week and for the next couple weeks, it looks like it's going to be dry around here in Oregon. So uh, I'm going to make sure the sprinklers come on occasionally. I have still a lot of stuff growing out here in the garden, and they're right here with all the rest. So they're going to get um, water just like everything else. So that should be fine for them. Another thing that I wanted to mention is that you want to keep your um, garlic beds and even your onion beds. All uh, members of the Allium family don't do real well with a weed competition. So you want to um, get the weeds out in the early spring when they start to grow or when they, whenever they start to germinate weed seeds. If you have any issues like that. Um, also to uh, keep the beds mulched. That helps keep the moisture level up. Um, the roots aren't terribly wide, so they need quite a bit of constant moisture. Garlic is a lot better than that, um, than like bulb onions are. 
Uh, ball bunions really do need the uh, consistent watering to do well. Um, garlic is a little bit more of a drier uh, bulb, so it doesn't need quite as much moisture, and especially towards the end of the growing season, it really don't need much uh, watering in there. Uh, but keep, keeping the weeds down will really increase your bulb size and the quality of the garlic. So I encourage you to, to make sure that uh, that happens and keep an eye on it. You know, make that a priority to keep those beds mulched and you'll have good success. All right, so that's all I have for you today on planting some elephant garlic. Uh, I encourage you to try it. It might be something that you like. It's something that uh, obviously they don't have as much flavor as regular garlic. Uh, so you want to like put them in towards the end of your cooking process. Or something mix it in towards the end of making soup or something like that. Uh, they still have very nice flavor and something that will keep in your house over a year. Uh, so it's a, a good food source and you know flavoring source. Uh, very nutritious and healthful. So. All right, I'll catch you guys on the next video, and God bless. Bye-bye.